Hello everyone. So I welcome you all in this another session of editorial discussion where we take the <coughs> no topics which are relevant for UPSC and in this session we specifically take the topics from economics and agriculture session. So again I welcome you all in this session. So the three important topics which we have chosen for this week is uh, one of the term green washing has been in the news for quite some time so we'll see about we will see about that second is uh, recently the paytm announced share buyback so we'll see everything about the share buyback and the third topic uh, which has been in the news for a while is the aggressive instance of federal reserves of usa of step for stemming the inflation they are increasing their policy interest rate so our intention or what we will try to understand is what happens with regard to india when the central banks of developed countries increase their policy rate all right so these are the three topics uh, which we are going to see in this session so let us start So recently the deputy governor of RBI has said that we need taxonomy definitions to avoid green washing all right to avoid green washing we need clear definitions regarding the green investment which are in the very news so what do you mean by this term green washing it is uh, no any claim made by a company which is false which is unsubstantiated it cannot be substantiated unsubstantiated claim of a company unsubstantiated claim of a company for their product which they say that no it has good impact good overall impact on the environment so this is what the term green washing means all right so whatever claims you are making regarding any products towards their impact on the environment that is false or that is the unsubstantiated it the fact which you are telling is unsubstantiated so <clears throat> usually uh, no negative connotation and one of the very famous examples which is usually given as a example for green washing is volkswagen scandal all right so volkswagen said that uh, you know their cars are emitting less emission than the standard set by the let us say any government so they claim that the cars of volkswagen are emitting less emission all right so they are more environment friendly however that was not the case as they have inserted some chips which you know got triggered when the car was there for a testing purpose so what it does was when the chip got triggered the performance of car decreased the performance of car decreased so the overall vehicle or emission got reduced so when the car was tested that chip which the you know volkswagen inserted got activated it reduced the performance of the car so overall emission of the car reduced however in a general day to day scenario that chip was not activated and what was seen was that car was emitting more emission all right more than the claims made by the 
Volkswagen company. So this is one of the very example which is given with regard to green washing or you can understand it can be anything, any claims, any products made by a company which says that it is more economic friendly but in reality that is not, that is when we are you know, using the term green washing, it has been used by several <coughs> you know, national scholars as well as international uh, leaders are using nowadays. So in UPSC the terms which are in the news mostly they are asked in the prelims examination. So uh, this can be a you know potential questions with related to prelims examination. Second thing is since a lot of funding is going towards uh, you know green things or green uh, financing is being there to finance the projects which are more environment friendly all right so that on that regard since the investment green investment is increasing investment in the projects which claims that they are more environment friendly are increasing so in that regard uh, no our deputy governor has said that there has to be clear definitions with regard to what are the standard set which no which you used to say that it is a lower emission or it is a less impactful on the environment so that the fundings which is being used to fund those products are good and it is not merely a green washing all right it is not merely a green washing where you claim but that is false so this is uh, related with this green washing concept uh, let us move to our next concept so recently paytm announced that they will be opting for or going for share buyback share buyback that is why this term came in the news so <clears throat> what is the meaning of share buyback so share buyback is called as when the existing listed company goes to purchase its own share from the existing shareholders for example let us say if you take the example of paytm also so first of all paytm went for an ipo initial public offering to list its share on the uh, stock exchange so that is why when it first went for the public it issued their initial public offering all right ipo it was issued now let us say a lot of people got the shares of the Paytm. So they are the existing shareholders of the company as they own the Paytm shares. Now what Paytm is trying to do is Paytm is trying to buy back or buy the shares from their existing shareholders that is what we come as share buyback or share repurchase फिर से हम अपने shares को खरीद ले रहे हैं from the existing shareholders that is what we call as share buyback next thing is why a company indulge in share buyback वो share buyback करते क्यों है what is the motive behind that so two three motives can be there for example let us say uh, no, Paytm wants to reward their shareholders. First thing can be Paytm wants to reward their shareholders. So what it can do is it can buy back the share at premium. Which means that let us say uh, no, Paytm share is currently trading at 500. And Paytm says that we will be buying the shares which is currently at 500 at 10 percent premium all right 10 percent badha ke paise se hum we will try to buy it, buy it back so the idea is to reward the 
existing shareholders that can be one another thing is what company tries to do is the existing shareholders of the promoters is usually increased because company is buying back its shares though the existing shareholder patterns of the promoters of the company increases and it reduces chance of any hostile takeover of the company hostile takeover of the company because unke promoters jo hai founders jo hai unke share in the company is increased all right let us say earlier paytm founders let us say you know vijay sekhar sharma has a uh, share of worth of let us say 20% now with the share buyback it, the his share may increase to 25% so it reduces the chance of any hostile takeover by the any other person so that is another way of seeing the thing that share buyback why company indulge in share buyback one or two things you need to understand here is first is a uh, uh, existing shareholder of a company can be rewarded either through let us say share buyback or rewarded through dividend usually uh, you know some of the companies announces dividend to people or to its existing shareholders the main point here which you need to understand is when a company provides dividend or announces dividend so it is taxed at company level also at well as well as that individual level also those who are receiving that dividend all right however in case of share buyback all right in case of share buyback the tax or the tax is there at the company level itself the person who is selling uh, the share will not be taxed so that is the difference between uh, rewarding due through share buyback or rewarding through dividends so imagine a scenario where you know everything is same everything is say, uh, similar and these are the two scenarios where one want to rewards their existing shareholders through share buyback and another uh, no reward their shareholders by this uh, dividends so in india the better scenario would be share buyback in india the better scenario would be share buyback so these are the things uh, with related to share buyback uh, it is also you no know, the terms in news where uh, this can be a potential questions in the prelims examination also so this is related to this topic now let us move ahead <clears throat> so concept of the week so this is also in the news uh, where you know the central banks of the developed countries be it federal reserves in usa or bank of england also european central bank they are increasing their interest rate mainly to fight the rising inflation in their country all right so uh, in usa as you can see uh, the inflation has risen up uh, uh, very aggressively and it was nearly around 9% uh, no which is highest in the last <coughs> 30 40 years in usa so to stem the rising inflation federal reserves recently increased the uh, policy rate interest rate by 0.5% by 0.5% they have increased the interest rate majorly to you know fight the rising inflation in the country so when you increase the interest rate you reduce the you know, amount of money supply in the country which makes cost of credit uh, you no know, costlier which reduces the consumption demand which reduces the let us say <coughs> private investment also because cost of borrowing increases so overall impact is that demand 
decreases. So prices also decrease, so inflation is decreased, so that is why the interest rate is increased. Our intention here is to understand what this move by the central banks, uh, let us say federal reserves will have on emerging countries like India. Will have on emerging countries like India. All right. So, if we uh, see the several impacts which may be possible on the emerging countries like India, for example, <coughs> if interest rates are rising in uh, USA, first of all, it will lead to capital outflow from India to USA. Since interest differential will reduce, people may find it more profitable to invest in USA. Uh, also, it is more considered as more safer options also. So, financial, you no know, foreign portfolio investment, all those people can take money from the Indian stocks and can invest in the US market. So, what it will lead to? It will lead to outflow of dollars from India to USA. All right. Outflow of dollars to USA. What will be <coughs> its consequent impact? So, there will be outflow of dollar from India to USA, it will impact or it will have impact on the value of rupee. So, no dollar will become scarce, dollar will strengthen vis-a-vis -vis rupee and it may lead to depreciation of rupee. You have seen that you know, rupee has crossed the barrier of 80 and it was you know, somewhere around 82, 83 it has reached. So, this may lead to depreciation of rupee, all right, vis a vis dollar. <coughs> now, depreciation when rupee depreciates, imports become costlier. Whatever things we are importing, they become costlier uh, no, because of depreciation of rupee. For example, the crude oil which we are importing uh, you know, heavily uh, may become uh, costlier because of this depreciation of rupee and a term is used called as imported inflation. The inflation in the domestic country, domestic territory because of increase in prices of imported product, products. This is what we call as imported inflation for example if india is importing a lot of things you might have seen also that you know uh, prices of cars have gone up because they are saying that the inputs which we are importing their prices have gone up so overall input cost has increased so the price of car has increased so depreciation of rupee may lead to uh, you know becoming imports costlier it may lead to imported inflation also. On the other hand, in terms of exports, what we can say that it makes export competitive. It makes export competitive. Our prices will become competitive in the uh, no, ex uh, overall market, external market, international market and it may lead to rise in exports. It may lead to rise in exports. But here what we need to understand that, uh, you know, if federal reserves are increasing rates in USA, so cost of borrowing will increase, the demand or consumption demand will increase. So it will be difficult for India to export in USA where the idea is to suppress the demand. All right. So our export may not rise at the level which we are thinking of just because the, their demand in the international market is not there. Alright, so that is another point 
what it will lead to uh, no costlier imports export not rising at that much may lead to trade deficit trade deficit may rise that is uh, export minus import it may increase trade deficit may increase which again will have a negative impact consequence on current account deficit current account deficit so rising trade deficit on account of depreciation of rupee may worsen the current account deficit of the country may worsen the current account deficit of the country on the related front <coughs> you know physical deficit may also increase let us say we are uh, relying on imports prices of imports have increased so that is one thing another thing is if we have lot of borrowings foreign borrowings so that will also become costlier so overall impact can be physical deficit can rise in that scenario all right <clears throat> so the physical deficit is rising the related consequence is that the sovereign credit rating agencies such as fitch moody standard of poor crisil for that matter which provides uh, you know ratings to the given countries whether how much investment friendly they are or how much you know any person who is trying to invest in those countries they see the uh, ratings provided by these sovereign credit rating agencies if the sovereign credit rating agencies provide adverse rating all right what it can do is it can hamper or it can negatively impact the foreign investment in the country it can negatively impact the foreign investment in the country because of adverse rating by these sovereign credit rating agencies so what we can see is the foreign investment may decline foreign investment can decline because of these things <clears throat> for companies you know who are earning in dollars for example let us say it companies infosys tcs etc wipro who uh, whose earnings are in dollars they may see greater revenues for themselves because of on account of depreciation of rupee all right for example let us say you know in first quarter they earned 10 million where 1 dollar is equal to let us say rupees 50 and in another quarter they earned let us say similar earning is there 10 million but 1 dollar is equal to let us say rupee depreciated to rupees 70 so obviously once you calculate their profits in rupee terms in second quarter they have improved their profits or let us say revenue so those companies who are earning in dollars they will see increase in their revenue or profits all right so <clears throat> these are some of the impacts another thing which you can related thing which you can see here is uh, since it may lead to outflow of capital which may put downward pressure on rupee resulting in depreciation of rupee which may lead to you know what we have seen is imported inflation all right which you no know, which can lead to increase in prices in the domestic territory or for example let us say in india they see a price rise so what it will does is it will force rbi to go also go for monetary tightening within the country all right so domestic interest rate can also rise on account of this move by federal reserves so that is also one of the possibility which you can see here all right so these are the things with regard to uh, this session i hope you have learned a little bit and i hope that you have enjoyed the session thank you